Ask the first question. Are you ready for this? Yep. What would you like to say to everybody? Hi. It's been a while. <laughs> I remember these days. What's it like to be back? Oh my. I definitely remember these days. So, for people who don't know, you were the first SBSK interview I ever filmed. Yes. What have you been up to the past four years? Living life. Getting a day older every day. I'm pretty much just a couch potato at this point. Because you're 17? Yeah, just couch potato, watch Netflix, that's about it. <laughs> I know you do way more than that. I mean, honestly, I've been binge watching Netflix. <laughs> that's about it. That's it? That, that's, a, that's a whole update. Pretty much. You're just, you've been watching Netflix, that's it? Pretty much. All right, everyone. He's just watching Netflix. We're done now. <laughs> that's, all, that's all you got to say? No. There you go. You can give them something. They've been but, waiting four years for this. But also, happy reunion. How do you want to introduce yourself to people who don't know you yet? I'm Kevin. I have the ACC, in which I don't have the middle part of my brain. How do people react when you tell them you're missing a part of your brain? They're like, there's no way you could survive. I'm like, obviously there is, because I'm sitting here today. Oh, yeah, and I got new glasses. They're looking spiffy. Which, if you guys don't recognize me... Oh, it's Kev! I'm here! What was it like for you when SBSK first started getting popular, and you were sharing your thoughts, and people were watching and listening and commenting? I thought, I was like, how are these people listening to me? Just blabber on for five minutes straight. I was your teacher for over three years. Three and a half? I think it was three and a half years. Why don't you share with the audience something that you know about me that nobody else knows? The fact he's a goofball on steroids. What does that mean? He's just a goofy person. What's your favorite thing to do? Talk about the weather. You falling asleep? Kind of. I got up at 8.30 this morning. Why do you like to talk about the weather? Because for all my weather heads out there, you know what's going to happen in a couple months. What? Well, hurricane season's coming next month. Now, I remember some things that you were still learning when you were my student. Did you learn to tie your shoes? No, not yet. How do you compensate for that? By having non like shoes or just flip-flops in general. Well, there you go. You can still go on about your life and everything's fine. Yeah. Is it okay if we have a conversation about ACC for sure. a little bit? Sure. Go ahead. What are some of the complications it causes? Short-term memory loss. Sometimes you forget someone's name. Uh, hyper. You're hyper all the time. But there's a good side to it as well. You think, oh, it's all going to be go downhill from here. But in my case, there's actually a good thing coming out of this. What are you most proud of yourself for? Well, the fact that I've grown to be this every day. How would you describe yourself today? Pretty much built the way I would want to be built. If somebody meets you for the first time and they don't know you have ACC, will they be able to tell? Probably not. They won't tell if I have ACC or not. Because it looks like I'm normal. A normal person that doesn't have any disabilities at all. But then they get to know me better and better and better. And then they start to figure, oh, he has ACC and all that. If somebody watching this interview meets you in person and wants to be your friend, how should they start that? Heck, I'll be their friend in a matter of a few seconds. Because, I mean, it's nice to know. And you know what we ought to do at some point? What? Have a meeting, a Zoom meeting with all of the people here. What's your favorite memory from your time as my student? Oh, that's easy. Me scaring the crap out of you with a snake. <sighs> I still wake up. I still have nightmares about that. <laughs>
When I saw that rubber snake, I knew it was fake. There's no way. I, am, I was just embellishing for a laugh. Now. Tell the story to people who don't know it. Uh, I went in the previous prior day to this. Went, go find my snake in my closet. Was it a real snake? No, it was a rubber six foot snake. There's no way you would have broke a broom over its two brooms over its head if you knew it was fake. So you really think that I thought a snake was in the classroom? Yes, because there's no way you would have said, oh, you got me, Kevin, it's fake. Once you went to the bathroom, I was like, oh, here's my perfect time to clean it. Sit back down, act like nothing happened. Put my backpack in the same way it was, nothing happened. You turn around, go sit in your seat again, look down, there's a snake. And then you go, pick the broom up, slap it over the head, break the broom over its head. Two brooms, actually. I think the broom broke in half. Yes, it did. And honestly, I was, I was laughing at this point so hard I fell off, fell out my chair. And then that was right after you got me with the gorilla suit, right? <laughs> I mean, you got me with gorilla suit and then revenge followed really quickly after. You know, people are going to watch this and think, what was going on in that classroom? Yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. That was like... I was expecting him not for in a gorilla suit. What did you think when I came in dressed as a gorilla? That was just for me getting you to laugh. What, you're telling me that you... I knew it was a gorilla, obviously. You jumped out of your boots. Yes, but that was just for the fun of it. Whatever, man, I got you. No, I got you good. I got you good then. I'm pretty sure you hit your head on the ceiling you jumped so high. No, I was... 10 feet away, but I'm pretty sure I didn't break a broom over your head, did I? That's true. I did break a broom over the snake. Exact two, actually. Did everybody laugh when I did that? I was laughing because I didn't expect it to go that well. So let me ask you this. We were always laughing in the classroom, playing jokes and making pranks. Did that make you want to be there more? Yeah, definitely. Why? Because the fact that it's a fun environment. Did that make you more willing to listen and learn? Yeah. You were there during the beginning of SBSK. Mm-hmm. How would you describe that time to somebody who wasn't there? Well, it's definitely trial and error. The first few months were trial and error. What do you mean? With the janky setup, all that. Hey, my camera was not janky. I mean, you had a broken iPhone 3, so you have to admit it was pretty janky. What were you thinking when we had that janky I was setup? like, well, this guy's Southern, I can tell you that, because there's no way he would have made this janky little setup with a textbooks and all wait, that. Wait, wait, what does that mean, I'm Southern? Well, obviously, a redneck would have done the same thing. Do you say things as they come to you? Yes. Explain that. It's the fact that I have a direct connection from my brain to my mouth. There's nothing in the middle? Yeah. Is that a good thing? To a certain degree, yes, but to a certain degree, now. When does it get you in trouble? Sometimes. How does it get you in trouble? Depends if something comes out wrong, for instance. Well, if you say something that comes out wrong, what do you hope people understand? I'm like, oh, I didn't mean it that way. I meant it in this way and say it the right way. Are most people understanding? Yeah. Why is it important to feel safe and comfortable with speaking your mind? Because you never know what you're going to say. I mean, you ought to crack, crap, crack a couple jokes. See, I just stuttered there. I meant to say crack a couple jokes. I ended up saying crap a couple jokes. Whatever you're doing, don't crap a couple <laughs> jokes. <laughs> oh my god. Yeah, and honestly, here's the funny part. The fact I'm not surprised he lost it when he got the snake. 
So is there anything I could say to convince you that I knew that snake was fake? No. Honestly, I believe you thought it was real. No matter what I say? Yes. Okay. Because honestly, that was funny. Alright, you know what? I thought it was real. Exactly. But now I want you to admit you thought the gorilla was a real gorilla. Heck no. What was the most important thing you learned in my classroom? Social skills. What kind of social skills? How to interact with people, all of that. What kind of social skills do we work on in the classroom? How to communicate with people, all the friends and all that. Why was that difficult for you before? Because it was just difficult with not knowing you or any of the other people. But three years later, I knew everyone in the back of my hand. Did you feel like everybody was your friend? Yeah. Did you ever have that many friends before? No. Just one. And then that ended up growing into six and a half million. What's something people would find surprising about you? My personality, your name, my personality, all that. What's your personality like? Interesting. Funny, lovable, cute, all that. And you're so humble. Yep, humble and kind, that's for sure. What do you want parents of children with your diagnosis to know? It's gonna be all right, cause if it's just like me, if they're just like me, then here's them 20, 30 years in the future. So there's nothing to fear? No, I mean, you're gonna be completely good, They'll live their own life, you'll live yours, everything would be fine. What's the best thing that's happened in the past four years? Well, the fact I have a girlfriend. What is that? What are you holding up? Bracelet. It's basically a promise thing that I won't cheat or anything. What's your biggest goal in life right now? To get a job, support my girlfriend, all that. How do you want to support your girlfriend? Any way I can. Well, it sounds like you have a real loving relationship and I'm happy for you. Yep. Like you and Alyssa. <laughs> Why are you laughing? Uh, fact, I didn't think you guys would get it off like this. What do you mean? Uh, I just don't, I honestly have no idea. It's funny. Why do you think we would hit it off? To where I thought, oh. She's not going to fall for this teacher, just straight up, out of the blue. You thought because I was a teacher, I couldn't find love? That's true. <laughs> what? <laughs> Don't fall backwards. <laughs> You're tearing me apart. Guess what? What? You tore me apart for three years. <laughs> I was your teacher and I did push you. And you know what math stands for? Math? Mm -hmm. No, what's it stand for? Mental abuse to humans. I love how the fact we're just basically calling each other out for everything in the past five years. Do you like just sitting down, being bros, hanging out? Yeah. Oh, you didn't realize it. I was calling you out as a student as well. 90% of the time. How were you calling me out? Just by the teacher, all that, run-of-the-mill teacher, da-da-da. Making fun of your job, all that. Did I ever get upset? No. You didn't even notice. Oh. I was calling you out for your job. I'm surprised you haven't super glued your fingers together. Why are you surprised I haven't super glued? Or like, done this and super glued one of our fingers, both our knuckles together or something. I think you're embellishing how clumsy I am. Well, A, we're all clumsy in some sort of way. I just gotta say, teachers can find love too. True, but not as well as the current student, ex-student of theirs. And that ex-student's me. <laughs> uh, I'm just chewing you out, aren't I? Before we end this interview, I'll wait till you're done yawning. Go ahead. All right, thank you. <laughs> oh lord. Is there anything else you would like to say to the audience? Other than, I miss you guys, 
And also, thank you for the 1 million subscriber plaque. If you want to go ahead and get that so we can show them. I mean, honestly, that's an amazing accomplishment. Tell you the truth. I never thought we would end up getting this. So let's talk about this because you were a founder of this blog. It started in the classroom with you sharing your thoughts. And yep. now you got this. Yeah. I mean, that is awesome. Because, I mean, then at 10 million, which we're almost there already, then the diamond play button's gonna come in. So what's it like for you to know that you're a big part of the team and you're the reason we have stuff like this? I mean, this is actually heavy. You wouldn't expect a play button to be heavy at all, would you? If you could say one message to the entire world, what would you say? Hopefully you guys continue on the path you're on I'll be here if you guys need any other questions answered.